we go ahead and get started. Um, I assume that everybody can hear me. Um, first off, let me just say thank you so much to everybody who has joined this call today. Uh, today is our first webinar for escrow. Um, and the objective of today, uh, well, first let me introduce myself. My name is Marvin Abrinica. I'm your host today, but I'm also the CEO of Wonderfund. And uh, Wonderfund is a regulation, we're a crowdfunding portal. We help small businesses take their offerings online in order to raise capital for them. Uh, and then we help them uh, by helping them get in front of the right people in order to help them grow. <laughs> Um, today, we are hosting one of, um, one of our favorite startups that we've been working with um, the last few months, um, who just started their offering uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, Caleb Gilbert is the CEO, which I'll turn him over to you in, in a moment here. Uh, but before I do that, let me at least uh, lay some ground rules and our agenda for today. Uh, first off, uh, this is meant objective-wise is to introduce you to escrow, what they're doing in this space. I'm assuming that you joined today's call because you're either a freelancer, um, you're interested in the gig economy, you're interested in startups, um, you're also potentially interested in what crowdfunding is. And so uh, Caleb is here to tell you about his company and uh, I'll give you the quick quick uh, overview of the rules for, for this call is that uh, Caleb's going to go ahead and share his deck with you and uh, if you could hold back any key questions you might have until the end. He's going to go for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll turn it over to everybody else for a Q&A. If you do have a burning question, if you go over to the right-hand side of the interface at the bottom, there's a, a little chat function. And what you can do is you can type your questions down there. Um, that way, you can, we can uh, address them one by one at, during the Q&A sec section. Our goal is to get you out of here by 12.30 and then I'll leave you with some information uh, afterwards, and then we'll do a follow-up with that um, as, um, as we close and wrap, okay? So with that being said, let me turn it over to the CEO, uh, Caleb Gilbert. Uh, so Caleb, take it away. Uh, thank you, Marvin, thank you. And uh, let me thank everybody for showing up today. Um, I'm gonna make this really quick. I'm gonna go over the deck. Uh, we're gonna talk about how the company started, uh, who's involved in it, um, what we're doing, what the product is, and then I'm going to go into a live active uh, uh, prototype view and, and a clickable prototype where you see everything. The application is currently on our phone. We're integrating the payment stack right in and we should be up and running into beta uh, into August. Um, so with that being said, let me start with my deck and I'll share my screen. Share my screen. All right. All righty. So, okay, everybody can see it. All right. So, um, our story, starting with me in particular, uh, I was a tutor. And uh, while I was in school for electrical engineering, I, I tutored kids for the SATs in, um, SATs for in, in physics and calculus. And uh, occasionally, these students would cancel or not show up, which put me in a really bad bind financially because I couldn't fill these appointment slots, you know, $60 here, $60 there. It's very difficult. Um, this started, or th th this happened um, frequently, and I got to thinking about why there isn't a better solution for these problems that are facing. I uh, come to find out there are a lot of other people that have the same problem in a lot of different industries. So the current payment methods that people use today that, um, that, that typically run are in service industries are splitting payments, which we've all done it, um, 50 now, 50 later. I mean, um, this is really high touch. It's negotiation. It's really awkward. Um, you have the 30, 90 day invoices, which is a compliance cash flow management system and back office staff. Then you have post dating checks where writing checks, picking up checks, depositing checks. Um, technology's gotten a little bit better. Um, it's just a, it, it's, it's, you know, you can still deposit it on your bank account, but you know, it's still a hassle in itself. And then you have small claims court when things don't go right. Uh, and then, even if you do win in small claims court, you can oftentimes not get paid even if you win. Um, so there's a lot of inefficient methods within uh, today's uh, in society today when it comes to transacting for current payment methods. Um, so obviously the problem is payments within the gig economy are time consuming, uh, cumbersome and subjective. Um, gig workers, you know, work on 30, 90 day invoices. Um, you know, they front a lot of time and money and materials in every transactions oftentimes 
software developers, and we'll hear from um, Ryan later on, uh, one of our co-founders, about him being a software developer and how it was really, really tough for him. Um, so in, within America, 33% of, of small businesses have claimed that the survival of their company has been threatened due to late payments. So it's obviously a pretty large problem, and those are just late payments. Those aren't non-payments or anything else. And then $17.3 billion was lost within the gig economy um, due to non-payments. So our solution is escrow and escrow is a mobile application in which two individuals can send and receive money, but with an added feature, instead of sending the money directly to the other person, the money's placed in holding until the job's done. Um, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, I promise there's nothing like this that exists. Uh, I get that question a lot. Um, so it's really nice that, uh, that, that we, we have the ability to come up with a solution that can help a lot of people. Um, so here are the four steps, like obviously how it goes, you know, they make a request, and I'll, I'll go through all of that later on in the um, prototype, the live active prototype as well. Um, but you send it to the other person, they agree, the money comes out of holding, and then it's placed, or it comes in the, out of their bank account and placed in holding until the job is complete and the money's transferred to their bank account. So our advantages of having this is um, you have this peace of mind, right? Um, where you know that no no party, one party, party has a leg up on the other person. You know, you're not waiting for somebody to do the job that you pay them for, and they're not waiting for, you know, the money that the job that they just completed. It's a better way to do business. And, and traditionally this wasn't an ability to, that we could have. This was never, um, because traditional escrow services were very expensive and very time consuming. You had to involve a banker and then a lawyer and all of this other stuff. So it's very, for, for lower order transactions, it's not very, um, it's not ideal to go after it. So, you can set guaranteed payments for uncertain events like cancellations. That's the reserve feature. Now that was the reserve feature that I, like I initially introduced because of the fact that I was getting canceled on um, in, when I was tutor. Now uh, that reserve, that reserve feature is a sub amount from that total amount that is yours to keep in the event that a cancellation occurs. And so that's the reserve. Um, so our business model is that we're going to start with a 2% or a $2 minimum with a 2% in the scales after that. So like anything under $100 is $2, and then it scales from 2% after that. Um, or you can upgrade to a premium subscription, which lowers the transaction fee from two to one. This is going to empower daily active users to utilize our product, not only as just a just in case, but more of a better way to do business, a better way to pay. Um, the secondary revenue is going to be dispute resolution. And this is when um, they escalate uh, through the levels of, of dispute to us and escrow and uh, choose to have us arbitrate it. Um, that fee, that there's a fee that comes along with it. It covers overhead for us. Now, competition um, is going to be Upwork. I'm sure most of y'all are familiar with it. Upwork is a marketplace for customers to post jobs, freelancers bid on them. Um, we are not a marketplace, so we do not make the connections the connections are usually already personalized connections that you have with another person that you're working with and this is just the payment platform it takes to facilitate the payments upwork charges a, a five to twenty percent fee um, that's extremely expensive and it's a lot of money on the service provider then upwork requires extensive customer contracts it's very high touch um, because they're legally binding contracts and then upwork is primarily a web application you can access it on your phone but there's not no real applications for it now, the team is myself. Um, like I said, I studied electrical engineering from Kennesaw State, and I have seven years of management experience. Um, in most businesses and uh, the industries that we are going into, I've probably worked or been in contact with most all of them. Um, I, I kind of had to do anything and everything I could to get by, and uh, I've, done it, I've done it all. So um, I have a lot of experience within those industries. And then Ryan is, uh, is a co-founder. Uh, he's product lead, uh, computer engineering from Clemson University. I'm an Alabama fan, so I'm not going to hold that against him. Um, but I'm a, he, he's a, he was a security engineer and a full stack developer. He's also an inventor, so multi-patents, and led several different development teams. Peyton Johnson was the second co-founder, the other person that I came to with the idea. He was graduating Georgia Tech at the time in machine learning and blockchain. He owned and operated a landscaping company prior to Georgia Tech, so he's always had an entrepreneurial mind. Now, our advisors, our key advisors would be Mark Hyatt. He was one of the, um, one of the first people that I went to with this. He works at Kennesaw State University as a bachelor's from West Point and from engineering and an MBA at Kellogg and then a PhD from North Central um, in leadership development. And he's been in, working at Fortune 1000 companies, startups on serial entrepreneur. And then Mark Hubbard is um, previous CEO of uh, Fire ID Payments. So he has payments experience. 
Um, he's CEO of Alpha Alpharetta Technology Commission and then a founder and CEO of the Impact Token Project, which is a blockchain and cryptocurrency project. Also 15 years of experience in managing as a VC. Now we have one other advisor that's coming on. Um, we are just having a discussion from it. It's Glenn Severty. He has 22 years of, in, uh, of experience in payments and a uh, really good guy, uh, great leadership qualities, but um, we're, we think that he will be a great asset to the team. Now, our current seed round and what we're raising right now is going to be that 500K for 2019. Now, we have the product up and running on iOS. Um, we'll be transacting shortly and we'll be entering beta. Um, yeah, so the actual, here's the actual product. It's actually on the phone. I'm not sure if anybody can see it. Are we sharing the screen? Or are we yeah, sharing? yeah, they can, or can they see it. it too. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's actually up and running and you can create deals. We're just integrating everything else into the bottom of it. So with that being said, let's go into the prototype. And I guess I'll stop there and ask for any questions before we go into the uh, prototype itself. Is there any questions? Can you see the, is, can anybody see the prototype? Yeah, if, if anybody yeah. has any questions, yeah. feel free to type them. Okay. You can unmute yourself and you can ask a question or type them in the chat box below. Right, okay, so here's the, Prototype. I'm gonna go ahead and play it on this and not necessarily on the phone. This looks a little bit better So you'll be able to go through it and um, so I, I'll first go through one side of it I'll cancel out and go to the other side which will be the client side device the other person that's sending and receiving the, uh, the request So if you go in right you can log in with your ID or if you have it or you can create a business a bank or business account so we do this because um, we separate the business, obviously, from freelancers, from tax identification numbers, and so on and so forth. In that way, if you're a new user, you sign up, your full name, um, everything else, like current onboarding process, you continue through, you do your mobile verification, um, and then you do your complete, uh, you complete your profile. We're adding your, adding your profile picture, linking your bank account, or you can skip for now. So if we go to link your bank account, it's gonna have your date of birth, your address, and then search for your bank. Um, Let's put, the, here's the, um, and then after that, obviously everything's set up from there, but here is the um, dashboard and what it's gonna look like. So you can have multiple requests running at the same time and um, traditional deals, and you can also receive them. So this one right here, because it's green, this is, this is a work that I'll be doing. Um, I'll be working on. So like if this was my account, I would be getting $1,200 for accounting work at the end of the year, or, you know, and this would be stuff that I was paying out. Now, to create a new request, um, oh, well, here, let me go to this real quick. Um, so there's like, um, you know, profile, you can transfer money. Um, to create a new request, you click this button, you go and you'd select somebody, let's say Hendrix. Um, you would set an amount and then that reserve amount that I was talking about earlier. You go to the next, which is the days and the, the holding period and how long you want it held. And then a quick description of what the job is going to be done. And then after you send that, it goes to the other person and it's waiting it's waiting status for the other person to accept it. Um, let me go back. So there's several different ways to go about it as well. I mean, um, if I go and click on Hendrix in itself, um, I can cancel things, right? If the reserve amount, um, if I cancel a job that, um, or that I'm paying somebody else for, that's not reserved, or that, that if somebody else cancels for the job, then I can give that back. That, that if somebody else cancels for work that I'm doing, I can give that reserve back if I choose to. Or I can keep it to myself. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> so that would be the client side. So at, as I said earlier, whenever I was making the request, um, this would be the side that you would accept it and then it would process through the money would go into holding and then it would be it would be set into this status so it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward it's um it's used strictly for you know services with um with a time delay between the two um very very simple like i said um, you have different feedback forms as well um if you go into um this way as well like a feedback form if you need to contact us you have plenty of time, you can say stuff, it comes back and begin shortly. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory in itself. Now, <clears throat> um, like I said, the application will be launching here in August. And this fundraising is to start getting things geared up so that when we start raising money, we can, or like whenever people start investing, um, once the application starts going out. 
Um, with that being said, <clears throat> and that's the application. Um, with that being said, I guess I'll open up if for any questions, if anybody has any, and I can go ahead and, uh, and answer those. So Caleb, um, there's a couple questions on the chat. Um, you know, well, first off, you're breaking up. So I think you're back now. Uh, but so the question, first question is from Jim, who holds the money? Is it your bank? Yeah, so our money is being held um, by our partnering uh, processor, which is Scylla. So um, the money is being held by their partnering bank. <clears throat> Scylla is our, par our partner for, the, for that one. And <clears throat> they're taking the, they're custodying the money in itself. They're a deposit broker. And um, they're, they're, you know, they're securing it in, in that way. So that's how that's going to be going. So in the future, um, start my video. Okay. Can anybody hear me? I just got to hear you, but we can't see you right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Give me one second. Okay. So in, in a sense, so whenever, whenever your the money's being held, um, we get a secure token back from Scylla and Scylla is, um, is securing that money while, while it's in holding. So that's, that's where we're going at. It. Um, but it's, it's a really good question. Uh, we worked very long time for a long time on the regulatory side of it to be able to get up and run um, legally. Any other questions from anyone out there? You can feel free to either unmute or just type it in here. Uh, while we're waiting for some of those, um, Caleb, can you tell us a little bit about um, when it comes to the uh, reserve amount? Is there a certain amount percentage or, or what that's required for there or how, how do you go about setting up that reserve yeah so the the reserve is an optional amount and it's not something that you have to have it's uh typically used for if like say a painter is painting or painting something for you and they put a hundred dollars worth of paint you would probably put that as a reserve to know that that hundred dollars is at least you know that's not that's not that's not money that you know he's losing for for instance. So it you know how usually people pay for a deposit or they put a deposit down on something. Um, this is taking that that deposit thing away so that we don't have to do that. Okay. But yeah. Any other questions? I mean, that's too traditional. How how do you guys make money? Can you um, explain that for everyone here? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're gonna make money uh, several different ways. Uh, as it stands right now, we're just taking a transaction fee. So um, that transaction fee is paid passed on to the service provider. So the service provider is going to be paying um, the one percent or two percent, depending on what it is for him, um, what he decides to do, um, if he's upgraded to a subscription or not. So um, we take a percentage. Obviously, we have fees that we have to pay for our processor, and then whatever's left after that, we um, it's, which is not much, we're just, we just, we, we make money in that way. So um, if we're talking about like um, in the future, uh, how to make or how much money we are going to get, um, we can have a million dollars in annual revenue <coughs> by, um, by 25,000 active users. And active users are people that are sending $4,000 a month through our application. So by 25,000 active users and they're sending $4,000 through our application, we're, we're hitting a million dollars annual revenue. So in, in, in realization, 32% of America's today or freelancers are working within the gig economy. So um, that market is about $800 billion. So 25% or 25,000 people um, probably get that in the state of Georgia since that's where we're based, but um, we'll also be launching in other, other cities, other states as well. Caleb, what do your launch plans look like? How are you going to get to those 25,000? Uh, that's a good question. Economy? folks yeah that's a good question so um the initial users um that we have that are pre-registered um very close to us so um we we launch initially with these registered users and because our application is viral by design um uh, luckily we have a little bit of a viral coefficient that we could bank on but um the first initial 1000 users we're going to be uh, outreach um pitch events stuff like that and, and more personal referrals um, as we grow anything after that, we're going to start our incentive program where the money that we are, we're profiting or the money that's not going to the payment processor from our fees are going to be funneled back into it through a, uh, a paid incentive program for signing up in that sense. Um, it's, and then we also go through an omni, omni market or uh, omni channel marketing program, uh, which is like, you know, these are our 
content-based marketing through social media or um, referral programs and, and so on and so forth. The application itself is pretty understandable why somebody would use it. Obviously, if somebody can relate to it or can't relate to it, um, they'll know pretty quick if, whether to use it. Um, it. Actually, the best person to tell you about it would probably be my co-founder, which is sitting next to me. Um, his name is Ryan, and he heard me pitch the event, and now he is our co-founder. Yeah, and which and I and it's a really uh, going to all these pitch events uh, like the one that Caleb did in Charlotte. Um, that's as he said, that's going to be how we're going to reach our first thousand users. We have a beta list of over two hundred users right now, um, and around I think over twenty letters of intent, um, signed letters of intent from businesses. Um, so, and my story, you know, I uh, I came to this pitch event earlier this year while I was working as a freelancer in Charlotte. And I was currently on a contract that I had a signed statement of work. You know, everyone told me before I got into freelancing that I need to make sure my contracts were solid. So I had a signed statement of work detailing exactly what I needed to do for my, uh, for my software contract. I was building um, an embedded device for a client um, to capture sensor data. The contract was for $500. A month prior to seeing Caleb's pitch, I had completed the milestone and showed the client and they had accepted it. And I was still waiting for payment. And when he and when he spoke at the event, I was like, it was like a light bulb went off in my eye, my head. I was like, I've been waiting for this payment for a month now. There's no reason why I shouldn't have it. Um, there has to be a solution to this um, because this is a person that I wanted to continue doing business with. It was difficult to. I didn't want to keep harassing them over payment, um, and I definitely didn't want to take them to small claims court because that would have cost me far more money than if I would have even made it. I couldn't, I didn't want to hire a lawyer because they charge $400 an hour. Um, it just made, this just made, made so much sense. If the money was in holding and it would have gone to me immediately at, upon completion of the job when she approved it, then I wouldn't have had to, uh, had to nag someone I wanted to do further business with. Um, and I didn't have to go through any steps if she didn't pay. Um, so this, this client was a startup. And so I was concerned about if they would ever pay me at all. You know, I had to, I had to worry if they had any uh, money to actually pay me. If they wanted to default on me, they could have um, because they were, they were behind an LLC. Right. So I don't know if that answers your question. And is there anything, is there anything else? else? Well, it, it kind of does. Um, that you would like to sense that, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. It kind of does, but but not as well. Um, and here's here's why. Um, that example is a one-time thing with five hundred bucks. You said you want to get twenty-five thousand um, users that are putting four thousand dollars a month. That's forty-eight grand a year through your platform. How do you find how do you find those those prime prospects? Because that's a very different scenario than what was just outlined. Okay, so um, that was the, that was where that was my first pitch. That was where I met Caleb later that month. This actually this scenario uh, is a bit different. So I was working as a consultant and I charged thirty five hundred dollars for this. The issue was, you know, we had a contract up front that um, that I was going to work a specific number of hours, um, and at the end of the contract, it ended up being um, it was I, I had a contract for thirty five hundred dollars worth of work, x amount of hours. And at the end of the at the end of the work, um, I was ideally was supposed to be paid for it. I was working for a company called Pastime. They're a multi million dollar. Uh, they're worth hundred million dollars. Um, GPS tracking company. And I didn't get paid for a month and a half after that because I wasn't their priority. So this is another situation where I would have used their product. Right. Their product. And I think I think what you're asking what you're asking for. Um, I, I think one of the the, the best ways that we're going to be able to acquire more customers is strategic partnerships with uh, marketing um, gig marketplaces. So like um, small business associations, uh, you know, any, any gig marketplace that's not taking payments and they're just a connection basis, like say Thumbtack would be a great example. Um, it'll be a while before I'm sure we can probably partner with Thumbtack, but um, being, being, having, having partnerships, strategic partnerships with businesses like this would, would help us um, acquire more customers in that sense. Okay, great. I mean, so st strategic partnerships, got it. Right. And your, your question also, uh, you mentioned, you know, um, you know, at the, at the $4,000 a month mark uh, for 
for businesses. I think for, for certain users, we'll have you know, a lower amount of money spent, maybe plumbers, electricians, but for software developers, um, I was bringing in you know, close to around 120,000 in that uh, over the course of a year. So it's possible that a lot of our users are bringing in closer to eight to $10,000 a month uh, through this platform. Yeah, I mean, that is very low. And we're trying to keep it as low to the possible so that we can, we can acquire more and more customers. But I mean, it is a good, it is a good point. Um, and acquiring customers is difficult. It is a B2C product. Um, I think in the future, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale into also B2B as well, enterprise solutions. This is gonna be later on down the road after we get everything stabilized internally. But it is, um, it is, it is going to be that. Um, but a customer, obviously, more customer feedback um, so that we can tweak the product and make sure that everything's running per, uh, uh, great. And, you know, after that, we'll be able to, uh, to assess the market to see what kind of inter enterprise solution we need to go to after that. Okay. So we probably have time for one more question and then a wrap up uh, from your end, Caleb. And then as a follow up, what we'll do is we'll send out this material to the list of folks who joined us today. And um, if you have any other questions, you can also go to um, uh, wonderfund.co. Sure. Any questions? All right. Okay, so go ahead and wrap it up. Caleb. All right, guys. Well, I do appreciate everybody for coming and joining. Um, again, my name is Caleb Gilbert. This was Escrow. If you need any, um, I'm gonna send a follow-up email for all of the participants in this meeting. Um, this is going to have our I, one of my pitches from FinTech Generations, uh, the video from that, and then also a short commercial as well. So if you have any more following up questions, feel free to, re uh, to reach out to me and uh, or go to wonderfund.co if you're interested in uh, shooting us some investment. Uh, you can own equity in, company, uh, in the company for as little as $20. Um, but like I said, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, okay. Lastly, I just want to thank all of you guys for participating. Um, this is going to be a regular instance from Wonderfund. We're going to have different companies who are pitching their products and their ideas as well as their, uh, their, their, their companies here. Um, we really like what Caleb's doing over here uh, simply because we're entrepreneurs. I know a lot of you guys are entrepreneurs, and this is a real pain problem that many entrepreneurs have, which is essentially collecting payments. Um, there's a lot of delinquent a past due type of uh, invoices that we have yeah. to take down from time to time. This seemed like a natural fit for what we're doing. And I really like how Caleb and his group is, is solving that. So again, you can visit escrow.com. Caleb, when does the app go live? Yeah. So our beta launches in the middle of August. So August 15th, um, we're integrating the payment system right now and then everything else should be up and running. Okay. So it, it's going live here in the next few weeks. You also have an opportunity to help back their company. Like Caleb said, it's as little as $20. Um, and some of those, uh, those subscriptions that you could get, you can actually get a, a free subscription depending upon your investment amount uh, at wonderfund.co backslash escrow. That's E-S-G-R-O. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out after we follow up. Thank you guys so much. And we really look forward to chatting with you again soon in the future. Thanks, Caleb. Thank you, guys.